You are watching the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa. So, so, so happy, happy, happy people. Welcome, welcome on another exclusive, exclusive why? Because, I mean, when I posted, just this afternoon and the first comment i had and the reaction is who is hosting who as a matter of fact <laughs> so you understand what i mean and you see who is sitting beautifully sitting here in our studio so now we're gonna do a host host conversation tonight as you can see two powerful african women yeah women with guts and nerves queens yeah left born and raised on the continent relocated in the diaspora and start changing the narratives and taking their diaspora home that is our mission and you see it's not a coincidence we're still keeping this colonial name susan susan right it's not for anything we're gonna leave them behind here but we, we're making sure that all our people are relocated when we relocate all our sons and daughters worldwide on the continent then the last queens that came last would be going back home so welcome to the pan-african daily tv and if you're joining for the first time please make sure you click like share and comment you know why because this is your time this is the decade the queens are paving the way and giving you the opportunity to be and join to join the movement uh, you know you know what we're waging war we're already at war you all know it but like we said and like susan says all the time on africa arise it is not a war that we're going to fight in those bullets. And that's why she's so shocked. Why would Nigeria, of all, yeah, take the strategy of, of people killing themselves? In 21st century, Susan is shocked. He's shocked. And when she says, I miss home, I miss Africa, I miss Nigeria, she means it, actually. And then, not only that, I heard some other, you know, comments like, but why would she even miss Nigeria? I mean, definitely she must have missed her parents. Yeah, and not Nigeria. Yes, because exactly that is the mindset of the Nigerian on the continent and even in the diaspora. Who would dream in this point of time to say, I miss Nigeria? Come on, give me a break. Yeah, but this queen is the queen and champion of Nigeria. She knows what she's talking about. She knows why she must miss motherland. And she is here to educate us, to tell us a story, why she misses Nigeria, why she misses home. Why she misses Africa? Is there something that she left back home and she thought that it was here, right? And then she discovered, oh, where am I? I should be going back to where I am. Tonight is the night when Susan Susan host each other on a beautiful conversation on I miss Africa because she's gonna ask me the same question. Yes, Sue, what about you? What are you doing here? Do you miss home? Do you miss Africa? What are you doing here? When are you going back? So we call this show a duo show. As you all know, Susan West is the founder and uh, president and leader and project manager. I already told you all this, a consultant and a seasoned journalist. It's not, it's not like me. <laughs> it's not like me. She's a professional. Yeah. And she's been rocking the Nigerian main TV stations. I mean, she's an icon out there. So when she sits down, research, put out that story out there. I mean, you can see how everyone watches Africa Arise TV. If you have not subscribed to that channel, as I'm talking to you right now, there are two platforms in Europe and the UK and in the diaspora when you want to listen to the voices of women on the continent, women who have been there, who knows it, who are coming to take back their children, it can only be TV and the Pan-African Daily TV. And then you know us by our names, okay? You know us by our names. So I want to thank you, my dear guest, um, and family for joining this wonderful, beautiful conversation today. As you can see, she's so African. But what what am I? What am I? <laughs> what am I? Yeah, name. How are you doing? How are we doing? Uh, oh, 
Fantastic. We're doing great. Absolutely great. Of course, um, the story back home is not the same, but of course, we always have to look at the brighter oh, side. Fantastic. We're doing great. Absolutely. Yeah. I know, baby girl, you've been saying a lot of things that are so touching. And all of us, we're sympathizing with you. I mean, I hold daily conversations with you. I know how you sleep, how you wake up, what is going on, because the same battle that we are in, yeah, the same fight, as we can say, that we are in is not an easy one. So we always compliment ourselves. And I've been saying in a couple of your conversations and even you, you're just really down. Of course, just like me in Southern Cameroon, you used to call me a like name, how I'm seeing all these gruesome images, what is actually going on with our people in Southern Cameroon. Today, you are, I'm the one actually pampering you and asking what is really happening in Nigeria. Do you want to share that with us? Absolutely. You know, um, for me, I just want to, I would like to start from the Nigeria that I knew, the Nigeria I was born into, the Nigeria that I grew up knowing. Of course, a lot of people were, um, Oh, the older generation, well, we always heard them say things were not this bad. You know, the, every generation seemed to have an idea that Nigeria was better than the present, uh, you know, Nigeria. So, but for us, it was a beautiful Nigeria in, in my generation. And the Nigeria that I knew growing up was a Nigeria where we had neighbors who were Igbos, who were Yorubas, who were Hausas, who were full of needs. Well, we had every and everybody lived in peace and in harmony and there was nothing there was not a single moment that you woke up and you saw your neighbor who spoke a different language or dressed a little differently as a stranger or um someone to be worried about you know i remember in primary school my experience was whenever it was salah salah was salah is the um muslim um celebration you know when it was yeah. we, we we were so excited the same the same um, um excitement we felt when christmas or any um of the christian um, um holidays was coming you know because we look forward to eating in our neighbors houses they were houses they were muslims we look forward to sharing they shared meat with us when i would go back to um, my first day back to primary school after the public holiday you will see my my classmates who are muslims who bring us meat and we look forward to it that's the kind of nigeria that i knew the kind of nigeria i knew was a nigeria that you didn't have to you didn't have to travel to a different geographical location to understand your the language of the people i could literally be born in river state where i, I was born in as an ijo speaking girl i could literally stay there and learn how to speak Igbo, speak yoruba speak hausa because everybody in fact as young children we didn't even know the difference we didn't know the difference the difference that we see today the em emphasis on the difference that we we have today was something that that was manufactured by evil men evil mm -hmm. men in politics evil people in politics who saw that the only way they can get themselves to where they want to be in the political spheres in nigeria was to um uh, you know divide and rule and and the only way they can achieve that was to use religion as as a weapon you know beginning to turn turning muslims against against christians you know, so for me, the Nigeria, for the person who was talking about what's there to miss in Nigeria, if the person is watching, I will ask the person, <laughs> what's there not to miss in Nigeria? Forget mm. about the name Nigeria, the name that is given to us by slave masters for better, uh, for a, a lack of a better word to call that geographical location, I still call it Nigeria. Mm. Am I proud to call it Nigeria today with all the information that I have now? No, I am not proud to call it Nigeria anymore. We used to live in ignorance. We used to live in ignorance. We we knew very little about ourselves, our culture, our heritage, everything that has to do to do with us as black people. But the more we are awoken to the realities and and uh, the truth about us, of course, we're not proud to be called Nigeria anymore because we now know that the, the name Nigeria means nigger area, nigger area. When I was growing up. They will tell me Nigeria means Niger area, and then it was named after the river Niger. But then who gave the name River Niger, uh, uh, who named the river Niger River? And so, yes, we might not be proud of the name Nigeria, but for what 
what name should I use to re reference that geographical location that I call home? So yes, there is everything to miss Nigeria. Nigeria is a wonderful place. Nigeria mm -hmm. is, a, is a beautiful place. And the yes. people in Nigeria, people, people, People are the ones that make a place. People are the ones that create experiences for you. People are the ones that, when you, when we say we miss home, it's not necessarily the, the geographical location of that place. But of Correct. course, there are memories. There are memories that you have created. There are memories that you carry with you that no other place can, can give to you apart from those places where you have lived most of your life or born in. And Nigeria is that place for me. Why is Nigeria a place that I miss so much? I was born into a Nigeria where I felt like I could be the president of Nigeria. Of course, you will be. Regardless, regardless of whether I was born a girl, regardless of the um, chauvinist, male chauvinistic society that most African countries, African cultures have, I, I was born into a Nigeria where I woke up and dreamt that I was going to be great, that I could be this and I could be that. Mm -hmm. And anything that my mind could think of was in Nigeria that I um anything my my mind could imagine, I felt like I could achieve it. That mm. was a kind of Nigeria that I was born into. I was born and bred in Nigeria. I have yes, I have traveled when I was a lot younger. I started traveling out of the country, but I've only literally lived in the in the West for slightly over three years. Mm. There are people back home who say, what is, why are you so, you're in a comfortable place. Why are you so upset? Everything about when we go to your wall, you, everything you're posting is negative, you know, like things that are so depressing about Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Just forget about that place and just live your life. And I say, I can't, I cannot. That is not mm. who I am. Mm. I can easily sit down here in London and not care about what happens back home in Nigeria. But no, I will not. I will not because... Just like many of us here, we are all coming to that consciousness. Many of us have lived in ignorance all our lives. Correct. Many of us have lived in ignorance even to the point of, yes, when someone says that, why are you burying uh, Susan West? When I was growing up, it was a proud thing for me. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, it was a proud thing for me to be called Susan West. Why? Because when I went to a primary school, that was um, that was um, had um, teachers who were um, fifty percent of them were British, and then we had Indians, and then we had Ghanaians, and then of course Nigerians. When I was in primary school, I would cry every day because they will they will pronounce mispronounce my name and they will make jest of my name. Not the teachers, children. Mm. Children will laugh at me. When they call my native name, they will laugh at me. And I'll go home and I'll cry to my dad that this person called my name like this. And so my father gave me Susan. It's not a name I, I christened myself. So I said to my dad, I didn't want my native name written in my book anymore because they keep laughing at me and they keep, uh, you know, mispronouncing the name. You can imagine the trauma that and the, um, the, the, the abuse growing up in that in that space where even the adults around you didn't know any better. Yes. You know, you can imagine a young child having to deal with such um, 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 psychological battle. Correct. Correct. But you know what? Today I bear the name Susan, not with a mindset of um, a conquered person or an, an enslaved person. No. Mm. I bear the name Susan knowing that I am an African queen and nobody is better than me unless, of course, I do. I, I give that person power to be. So oh, yes. oh, yes. the, consciousness, the consciousness that we walk around with is far more important than people, um, 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 you know, um, focusing on what name you bear. There are mm. people who bear African names who don't carry Af Africa in their hearts like I do, who don't mm. have Africa in their hearts and spirit like I do. I wake mm. up every morning and I, I, I wasn't always a Pan-Africanist. I grew up knowing that I loved Nigeria. I grew up knowing very well that I love Nigeria, but I didn't know what Pan-Africanism was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I grew up and suddenly I began to read, I began to understand all these historical figures that nobody told us about anything about, nobody mm -hmm. taught us anything about. And the little that they, 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 they told us about these historical figures like Kwame Nkrumah and uh, Thomas Sankara were all narratives that was written by uh, uh, people who are not us. Yes. Yeah. 
And you know, the danger of a one-sided story is that you keep telling that story, you keep telling the story, and the more you repeat the story, it almost begins to be the truth. And for people who are not equipped with, people who are not um, 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 equipped with um, tools to help them find the truth, then it becomes the reality or the truth. Mm. So when we begin to, in this generation, thank goodness, when we begin to learn about these people and begin to understand that what these people, what the Western world have called these people or where they have categorized these people or how they have made these people look is not necessarily who these people are, you know? And so I have gotten to this consciousness where I am a 100% a Pan-Africanist. I, I go on platforms where people are talking because I'm Nigerian, of course, and most of the platforms I belong to, you see a lot of Nigerians. And it amazes me to see that Sometimes they, they don't realize that just um, uh, they think nothing else matters to them mm. apart from the things that has to do with Nigeria. And I'm thinking, I came to this awakening not so long ago. They need time, but it is our duty to be to continue to flog the the, the issue, to talk the story, to to um, you know. When, when, when you make mention about certain things about some, some African countries, unfortunately, Nigerians are very well traveled uh, and know so much about Europe and the Western world, but don't know very much about other African countries. And that mm -hmm. saddens me. And that saddens me. When conversations are being held and you talk about other African countries, you know, they, we, we, they have this attitude where it, like it doesn't concern them. Mm -hmm. You know, so where we're at, the Nigeria that I grew up in is a Nigeria that was that is was full of potential, which meant that I woke up in the morning. I, I knew that this is what this is what my dream is, and the opportunity, the opportunities are there, and the possibility that I will be that thing will be there. But here mm. in Europe, here in Europe, being a continental African who was not even born in, in, in this country, what are my chances of achieving my dreams? What are my chances? reaching the peak of my career whatever chosen career that i have chosen i know what i started africa rise just uh, barely a year ago and one of the things that made me um um start africa rise it was not intended to become a, an online program being mm. that i a background uh, on television and radio i had worked out um um, a, a project that was going to take me around all the African countries on the continent, you mm. know, doing what I, I like to do, which is interviews and, and, and putting documentaries together. And I was, I was booked to travel at some point in April. And I was so excited. I have been, I have been in, 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 in the UK for slightly over a year plus then. And mm -hmm. that's the longest I've ever, longest time I've ever spent out of, of the continent of Africa. Mm. So I was so excited. And then, boom, COVID came. And like a joke, um, they were beginning to shut down the airspace and borders and stuff. And I thought it was a joke. I thought um, in no time they're going to open up. And to cut the long story short, the, short, the more I, I realized that this wasn't going to happen, my brain just kicked in. And I thought, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait until the world opens up to me again because mm. my experience on the streets of london my experience getting on the bus in london my experience talking to different africans that i meet i meet my soul began to i, I began to feel this burden in my spirit that i never felt before which is i see africans on the streets doing jobs that i know that on a good day back home in their countries they will never do. Correct. I felt pained when I go on the bus and I see a nursing mother who is carrying her baby early morning from one point to another. You can tell that she's done a night shift somewhere. She's a nursing mother. She's carrying a, a baby, a, 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 an infant in, in a push chair getting on the bus. The more I saw it, the more I was feeling like... I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not here to save 
all of Africa, but I will do my bit. My if my bit means that I have to talk, I have to awaken us mentally, I have to strengthen us mentally, I have to strengthen us emotionally, psychologically, whatever that I can do to make us understand and feel the pride that we are as Africans, then mm. I will do. And that's how I came about starting Africa Rise. Africa Rise came to my head. I was just sit sitting down and thinking what I was going to call the and something just like Africa Rise because I want Africa to rise up. I want Africa to wake up. Mm. I want Africans to rise up because they have all it takes. They have the potential to be the best in the world. Yes. They, but but the enemy has seen that allowing us to speak in one voice and nobody can come close to us again. Nobody will be a competition. If only Africa will rise up and speak in one voice. And so the enemy continues to fan this flame where we, we, we keep fighting and killing ourselves. And if you ask us what the reason was why we were fighting, we can't even put our finger on it. Mm. We can't even, we don't even understand how and why we're fighting and hating each other. Correct. You know, so for me, it's, um, that was the Nigeria that I knew. And that's the Nigeria that I, I hope, I hope is not so late or too late. Whatever shape is going to take, whatever form is going to take, whether we change our name or not, whatever, I just hope that it's not too late. Because today is Nigeria. Is a Nigeria you wake up from December two, 2020 up until now, 600 children, students have been ad abducted from their schools. Mm -hmm. Some of them killed even after ransom have been paid. Mm -hmm. Today's Nigeria is a Nigeria that is full of sophisticated minds, brilliant minds, yet the person who is at the uh, um, at the helm of affairs as the president of Nigeria is the least qualified to be the president of Nigeria. Therefore, Nigeria is put in a position where just today I have heard security alerts in Abuja because there have been trailer loads or truck loads of Fulani herdsmen arriving the capital city of Nigeria, which is Abuja. Yeah. I saw it. Schools are shutting down. Mm -hmm. Schools are shutting down. When I came to this country um, three years ago, it was not an intention to stay for a very long time. I came to this country on a holiday with my family. I came to this country because my husband lives here. I came with my children. But the night before we left Nigeria, my husband almost had his life sniffed out of him right a few yards away from me. Mm -hmm. by some dagger um, dagger carrying um uh, fulani men on 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 a motorbike it, it was it was just so you can imagine that i worked on television and radio for a while i was still working on television i was presenting a program for the national agency for food and drug administration and control which is uh, nigeria's um equivalent of the fda you know, mm -hmm. I, have, I have done that job for 10 good years. I loved my job. I loved my life in, in Nigeria. For the person who was asking, what is there to miss in Nigeria? I know that there is not a, such a perfect um, a, a thing as a perfect society anywhere. Even here in Europe, even in America, so Nigeria is not perfect. Nigeria was never perfect. But my experience in Nigeria was 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 that was was an experience that I, I couldn't get anywhere else in the world. Mm. I could wake up and say tomorrow I want to work in, in this place. I got offered jobs even before I asked for those jobs. Mm. And chances are that if I went to to um um, um, in, for an interview or audition for the job that I will get the job. I have been in this country. I have applied for jobs 
that I am overqualified to do, but I won't get it. Why? Because I don't sound British. And this is not a racism thing. Let's not get it all mixed up. It's not just about racism. It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing that people will, 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 will easily give jobs to people who sound like them, who look like them, who they understand. They will consider such people before they consider people who don't look like them. Mm. Why is it that we keep destroying our homeland and then we're expecting some form of miracle to happen when we go abroad. Mm. You know, Nigeria today, I am so saddened because every time I think about going back home, the first thing you hear people say to you is, um, you don't want to go back home because you don't want to go now or don't take your children. Mm. That's not the kind of Nigeria I knew. As far as I know, Africans also, Nigerians especially, I know, love to travel the world. And if the atmosphere back home was good enough, nobody wants to run away to Europe or, or the Americas or to Australia mm. or to Asia. Mm. All I wanted, all I wanted as a person was the ability, the freedom, the liberty to get up and say, I want to visit this place, I want to visit this place, and then go back home to my country where I am a first, first class citizen, regardless of my tribe. Most Africans leave and run away to these countries, not because they don't want to go back home, but it's because of the circumstances that they find themselves. For instance, during the COVID lockdown, we know how many people died simply because they didn't have access to get medical help. And some of these people are people who can afford to, to pay for their medical um, 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 treatment abroad. But the borders were shut down. So they couldn't go. A lot of them passed on. The Nigeria I used to know is not a Nigeria where the simplest simplest things that doctors can take care of will kill some will kill a person mm. the nigeria we have today is a nigeria where a governor calls the president of nigeria to want to report to say that we have intelligence that some herdsmen or fulani herdsmen are about to attack a community and the governor is kept on hold for over two hours and then when the attack happens and innocent lives are taken the Nigerian military turns up to that community so that they can protect the criminals from a reprisal attack. Hmm. Yes, I miss Nigeria. I miss Nigeria. I miss Nigeria because I have friends, I have family, I have a community of people. Nigeria is a place where you, no matter what anybody says about us, no matter yeah. the negative stereotyping, Nigeria is a place where you can come in as a total stranger and find a home, find a family. We are a loving people, very welcoming and warm people. Mm. I once traveled on, um, on, um, on a trip. Coming, I, I can't remember if I was coming to the UK some time around 2008. And I was sitting next to a white guy, a British guy, and we got talking and he looked so sad. And I said to him, why are you so sad? And he says, his contract in Nigeria ended and he's going back to the UK and he doesn't want to go back, but he refused to renew his contract. And I said, but why are you not happy? You're going back home. Mm -hmm. He said, he has never ever seen or been to a place like Nigeria. Mm. He loves Nigeria so much. He doesn't want to go back home. Why? Because the Nigerian society is a society that under normal circumstances, nobody, you don't want to be anywhere else. We, we, we are loving people. We, we are active. We are loud. We are full of life. We are giving. We are giving people. Mm. We we went. I once upon a time I had a neighbor who was a a Hausa man, 
the Muslim man. And I had my, my son was so young, and sometimes he will babysit him for me because he had a similar child, a, a child um, of almost same age as my son. And I'm telling you the story because I, I was thinking the other day, and I said, was I ignorant or things just really changed? For, for, for the worst. And my neighbor will call me and say, oh, you're not back from work. We're going to the mosque to pray. Can I take your son with you with me? And I, without even blinking, I will say yes. I didn't even think, oh, is anybody going to harm him? Is anything bad going to happen to him because he's taken to a mosque? That is the kind of area I knew. And my son will be taken to a mosque and come back, even though we are not Muslim. That's the kind of Nigeria I knew. The kind of Nigeria where festivities time comes, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Salah, whether it's Easter, and everybody cooks and gives to everyone to eat. Today's Nigeria is a Nigeria where your, your, your Muslim neighbor or friend gives you meat to eat and you're second guessing yourself, should you eat it or should you not eat it? Because what these evil elite politicians have done is, is um, you know, fan a flame of hatred and suspicion on everybody. That mm -hmm. your neighbor gives you food and you're thinking, I hope he's not laced with poison. I mm -hmm. hope he's not, he's not uh, um, you know, all sorts of things cross your mind. And today's Nigeria is a Nigeria that since after the Biafra war, the voices have never been so loud that the Biafrans want to go their separate ways. And now even the Oduduas, the Oduduas are the Yoruba speaking people. During the Biafra war, one of the reasons why Biafra did not win because the, the North had the support of the Yorubas. Mm. And even the Niger Delta where I come from, the Ijo's had the support. The Nigeria had the support of the Ijo the Niger Delta people, the, the uh, uh, Yoruba people. Today, it's not the same. Today, you hear other than the elites who are in politics, who are also uh, benefiting from the spoils of the heavily corrupt system and an evil system, everybody else is, is calling. Some people are calling for restructuring. Some people are calling to be separate ways. Some people think it's already even too late for restructuring. Yet, this man, who is the president of Nigeria, is not flinching. He is not flinching. A man who will never come out and address any killings that happen, but then, the moment there's a reprisal attack on a Fulani person, he comes out to make a statement. Wow. But and we are wondering, once upon a time, America would have raised their voice to condemn what is going on here. Europe would have raised their voices to condemn what is going on in Nigeria. The Britain would have raised their voices. What is the reason why all these people are silent? They are not blind. They know. They know what is going on. Have we asked ourselves, what is, what is the reason why they are silent? today. I made mention once upon a time, we were all, how, how, how they, they, they end up using us to kill ourselves, to bring ourselves down, I don't know, but that seemed to be the black man's problem. Once upon a time, Barack Obama was, a, was running for elections and everyone, all of us felt it was almost as though he was going to be the president of Nigeria and the president of Cameroon and president of Kenya. Everybody mm -hmm. were super excited. In hindsight, the worst thing that ever happened to Nigeria was an Obama's administration. Some people will disagree with me, but the truth of the matter is, when we begin to play back what is going on in Nigeria, what was going on in Nigeria before Obama, then you begin to understand certain things. Nigeria was on a pathway to greatness, true greatness. There was still corruption. There's always been corruption in Nigeria. In 2015, 
it was not the first time or 2013 or 2014 it wasn't the first time that um an unprecedented corruption was happening in nigeria no but then they orchestrated the people who, who who knew what they wanted to do orchestrated the kidnap of the chibo girls when those girls were kidnapped the entire world including myself we all took a placard bring back our girls hashtag bring back our girls little mm -hmm. did we know we fell for the ploy and the scripts written by the evil people to bring down a potentially great nation that was on the path to to putting africa on a map and of course inspiring other african nations to rise up nigeria was this was was declared the the um, biggest economy in africa and it was not a it was not it was not some kind of bogus, bogus uh, uh, um, um, story it was indeed the biggest economy in africa it was it was beginning to get to the point where it was going to start competing with places like brazil and all these places absolutely what we were doing so wrong what was it they didn't like why did they have to bring down jonathan's government mm. then i watch on cnn and i see the interview being conducted by this very seasoned Christiana Mampo. And she was talking to President Muhammad Buhari, then General Muhammad Buhari. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't help but begin to look at how she was almost falling over herself. Christiana Mampo, if you know her, if you have followed her, is not somebody who smiles easily. She's not somebody who laughs easily during an interview. This woman was falling over herself because she wanted to mm -hmm. make Buhari very comfortable. Mm -hmm. She was beginning to pick on certain positives making in fact she was laundering his image christiana mampo in that interview laundered general buhari's image to the point that even us as nigerians we're so confused if some of the other negative things we heard about this man was not true then they gave us muhammad buhari who on his first day, the day he was being handed over, said, I am a president of everybody, I am a president of nobody. Mm -hmm. And people understood and misconstrued that pawn. You know, they, they misunderstood it. They thought, oh, this is an incorruptible man. He must have learned his lessons from being a military president, and now he has come, got, you know, good heavens, he will make sure he fights corruption and things will change. Some of us were, were very cautious. I never supported Buhari from the beginning. I never supported him because as far as I know, the stories that I heard and read about and the experiences I had as a child when President Muhammad Buhari was a military president didn't leave my mind. When President Muhammad Buhari was a military president, we, we saw on the streets when military men were flogging our mothers for wearing je jeans in public, for mm -hmm. dressing in women's trousers in public. So I was thinking, who is this President Muhammad Buhari that Christian Amapa of CNN was portraying to the world? But even then, I began to think there is something that is cooking that we don't understand. And I remember just prior to the elections in 2015, there were, there were, um, um, the Western media and the Western world kept, you know, prophesying, I would say, or kept speculating that Nigeria was going to go into war. Nigeria was going to go into war. There's going to be, you know, the tension we felt at that time in 2015 before the election, I have never felt it in my entire life, not even during this COVID lockdown and the COVID uh, 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 drama. There was so much tension because of what was being said in the Western media. And we were wondering, what is it that was going on that we didn't know or we didn't see that is making these people speculate or project that Nigeria was going to disintegrate in 2015? Mm -hmm. But God blessed us. We had a president who, is a peace who was a peace-loving person, President um, Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. See, until tomorrow, we will never know what was said to him behind closed doors when uh, um, 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 Kerry, the, um, for the, the Secretary of State, visited Nigeria. But Jonathan refused to challenge 
the outcome of the elections that was so glaring that it was hijacked, it, it was uh, um, ruined. On television, on CNN, we were watching little children that you could not mistaken them as children of impaired growth. You could tell these were little children lining, lining up to cast their votes. But the, the, the Western media made it look, never for a, a second mentioned that children were voting in the North. And they installed this man on us. And since then, the disintegration of Nigeria started. We have heard at different times the fullanization agenda of Nigeria, the fullanization agenda of Nigeria. We thought it was just, it was mere conspiracy theory. Mm. But slowly and slowly and slowly, we saw, we saw it playing out. We began to hear utterances that before you would only hear um, someone saying, we heard from somewhere in behind closed doors, openly these people are making statements that, that all the way to the Nagia Delta belongs to them, these Fulani people. Belongs to them. Because according to whatever, in fact, I feel, I feel depressed most mornings when I wake up because I am wondering about the peace-loving Nigerians who live in Nigeria, who don't have an option of where to go, who cannot carry their bags and their passports and say, I am exiting because this is too much for me. Mm. Many of them have already been killed. We're now living in a very lawless country. I mean, a very lawless country where all sorts of criminalities now are, are, is, have become the order of the day. Yet, just a few days ago, a, a senator from Kogi State of Nigeria, Senator Smart Adeyemi, cried out. He was speaking and he cried mm. in the in the hallowed chambers. And his colleagues who are from the north laughed at him and made jest of him and said he's beginning to sound like the opposition. What they fail to understand is that when push comes to shove, if it ever gets to that point and it boils over, all the money they have stolen, all the houses they have built, all the big fences they have uh, uh, constructed around their homes is not enough to keep them safe. Correct. Some of them, some of the elites have come into that, have come into that uh, uh, reality. Maybe they knew all the while, but they didn't want to speak up because they were afraid of castigation but now they're beginning to talk. And sadly, the Nigeria that we have today is a Nigeria where just walking out of your house and, and going on the street to buy something and coming back is not guaranteed that you, you will come back home safe. Um, Queen Susan, I feel you. I have just one question. I know there's a question because um, in, in a couple of minutes you'll be leaving us uh, due to another conference that you have here i mean we're still going to continue on this conversation because uh, nigeria right now is our focus and uh, coming up on sunday we have an exclusive interview with tim frank timmy frank uh who is actually one of the top i think experts in this house between the past government and this present government we're talking about the government of good luck jonathan and the one now of excellent Buhari. so this expert we normally we're not open on on sunday but sunday it's an exclusive actually on the political game and arena now my question that i want you when you come on the, the uh, pan-african daily we we always ask and 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 keep this records down now susan nigeria has never had a capacity or has never had the privilege to have a president that is you. Now, we want you to confirm and to tell us. You already said it. Your ambition was, it was a was. Now, would you want to stand as president of Nigeria? Not now. If, if, if that Nigeria still exists, if Nigeria still exists, because with the reality on ground, 
Nigeria doesn't look like it can survive another year of President Muhammad Buhari, not to talk of till 2023. If that's right. Nigeria still exists, of course, many people shy away from politics in Nigeria because it can be so deadly, mm. especially um, if you're not part of a, a corrupt system and you come to challenge the status quo. Of course, but now we are at a point where nobody, I mean, I cannot, I cannot be timid. I cannot be intimidated to thinking that I, I, I should not take my own place of challenging what has been the status quo all this while. I mean, Nigeria has never had a female president. What stops me if I so desire to, to run for the presidency of Nigeria, if Nigeria still exists in, by the next uh, uh, elections? Correct. Thank you so much, Queen. That was the point. Because right now, um, all these problematic countries have to get mothers and queens as leaders. And we already said it, and we're looking at you actually to be that. It might not be in this present, like you say, in this Nigeria. We have to fix a lot of things first. That's for sure. We would have to fix a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but it is time. It is time that Nigeria, for the first time, has the opportunity to enjoy, to go back to that Nigeria. And for honest speaking, it is not a coincidence. And we're lobbying and we're standing behind you. I mean, we don't even want to waste time talking about these agendas, but we are saying that we're taking that responsibility and we see you as a potential candidate for Nigeria, not even in this 2020 thing, because like I said, the, all these things that are coming up, we have to put all these structures to fix first to calm down the waters boiling. But Susan, I can guarantee you that you are going to be the president of Nigeria. In as much as we Amen. exist on this dimension, and there is not going to be any negotiation anymore on these governments and these systems and, and, and wherever we are. And we know that we are backed so, so strongly, backed up, not by any system, but just because it is our time. And, and when it is your time, no one can stop it. No one. So, huh, Queen Excellency Susan, I can already guarantee you that we're on the right track. Now, I have a question in the group which is saying, Susan, can before you leave, can you just speak on Buhari's wish to invite Africa to Nigeria? What, what, what kind of thing is that? What's, what's the question again? Buhari's wish to, uh, to what? To invite Africa to Nigeria. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Africom. We've been we've been talking about it. And you know, um I thought of it differently. And then after a few days, as I was reasoning it, I began to think again that this is what might have happened. First, my first thinking was why did Buhari ask Africom to come? Because obviously he has not shown any kind of interest in fighting Boko Haram or the bandits or or whatever criminalities that have been going on mm -hmm. the only thing buhari is interested in fighting is fighting the people who are trying to protect themselves and their lives that is the people mostly in the eastern part of nigeria who have of course come up with the eastern security network that um, of course the um inamdekano has set up mm -hmm. my first idea of it was i am not an expert in international relations but i have never heard or seen anywhere that America goes to occupy and, and that peace actually really remains in that country. So for me, I'm also trying to find out from experts what would be different if Africom was 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 um, stationed in Nigeria? What is it that it, it might add to Nigeria or to mm -hmm. Africa? And I said, why will Buhari invite these people to come? The first thing that came to my mind was this. Buhari, first of all, this is one theory that I thought about is that Buhari saw that unlike when the Biafra war was fought, when he had the support of the Yorubas and the rest of the people apart from the Igbos, the dynamics have changed. And mm -hmm. so inviting Africom to come, to come and settle without thinking about the bigger picture and the implication of it in the future is that he might have invited them so that psychologically, they will checkmate all the other people who are beginning to raise their voices, i.e. the 
larger Delta militants that might come up to say, we are not allowing you to do what you continue to do. The Eastern Security Network that is set, that is set up by Imam Bekano to protect the people in the East because Buhari is not doing anything when it, when it comes to the you know, uh, Fulani headsmen encroaching on people's lands, going into the forest, killing and maiming, raping women and young girls and even filming them. So I said, psychologically, if America was at your backyard, and we know that America is the most powerful country in the world, there is no doubt about it. So the impetus that the ordinary people have uh, galvanized in protecting themselves, maybe he's playing a psychological game where you feel like America is there, and if America seems to be in support of his government, then we're going to be um, um, left to not do anything and watch them while they kill innocent Nigerians. Then I thought about it again and I said, not so long ago, I think Africom was supposed to, um, you know, relocate to Ghana. I haven't read up on all of it, but there was an opera or something and it, it, it didn't come to fruition. So my thinking is, first of all, when you have so many cockroaches in your cupboard, when you have so many dirty things in your cupboard, that's what they like. Because then they will tell you what to do and you must do what they ask you to do. Or else they say, we're going to let this out or we're going to criminalize you or you're going to be sent to the Hague because we do know that there is actually genocide happening in Nigeria, which they turn in a blind eye to. So I said, what if... Buhari was told behind closed doors to openly invite Africa to come and relocate to Nigeria. Because by so doing, then it is us who have then asked them to come and relocate to um, you know, our, our land or our, our territory. It's not them forcing themselves on us. And because of course, he has an agenda and so far, He's been allowed to carry on his agenda. The handwriting is on the wall to keep killing anyone who is not a Muslim or a Fulani. Hmm. And so for him to be allowed to continue to, to um, be this genocidal maniac, he's going to, of course, accept whatever that he's asked. All these are my theories. But one thing I have come to understand from also talking to people who are well vast in these areas. I haven't seen that it's a good thing for Africa to relocate to Nigeria. I haven't, everyone I've spoken to, the one thing somebody asked me is, look, um, look around the world and find out one place they have, America has uh, occupied that was left in peace mm -hmm. and not in pieces. And so, Um, normally, in, 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 on a continent with uh, the powerhouse known as the AU, even in, in case of, of a, such a situation on the continent, wouldn't it even have been like we are, we are hearing the AU uh, um, is inviting Africa, you know, to assist? Why would it be a single country that has to deal with this kind of a big body? I mean, you see the way you have divide them. You know, um, the AU is another problem on its own. The AU on its own, especially in today's, uh, um, the, with the leadership of, of what we have today, I bet you, even if they asked the AU, he would have said yes. <laughs> um, the AU would have said yes, because the person at, that, that is leading the AU right now, of course, it's no secret that he is not someone who has Africa at heart first. He also has to answer to the slave masters. And so if they had asked him, it, it would have been yes and yes. Um, but in, in this particular situation, it could have been a little tricky to come through the AU because as we know on the African continent, it's all the presidents are not on the same page, you know? Mm. <laughs> They're not on the same page when it comes to um, Africa's or their country's foreign policies 
um, and so on and so forth. So, i.e., um, you would have to deal with Tanzania, even though Magufuli is not there anymore. You have to deal with uh, um, um, Rwanda and all these places. There are some places doing make, make, taking major uh, strides, you know, for their people. So, but you know what? Africa is just... Africa has borders just artificially. It's an imaginary border. Mm. Africa's borders all around the continent is very porous. If AFRICOM is in Nigeria, it might as well be in the rest of all the African countries. Correct. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, <laughs> I don't know. You, you, do you still have some 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 one two minutes to just round up because I know you you you're here for one hour and then we also will be rounding up because this show was just really to uh, share this point and let you release release that 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 thing that has been keeping you actually saying uh, I I miss home but I can't just go home and we wanted to share this story with you Queen and you've actually done it like we know that you're doing it and preparing the way for you to take leadership of that country called Nigeria. Before we will start thinking about the names and even our own names that we bear. So it's been a wonderful pleasure to have you here. And you're so, so, I mean, you're, you're up to it. We know it anyway. Anyway, that's something for another day. So one last word. Oh, one last word from me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, well, um, if, if, if I were to talk to Nigerians, particularly, I would say to them not to lose hope. I know we're very prayerful people. We're very prayerful people. And um, the moment we, we, we stop, we, we, we lose hope, we begin to die. And as far as we, we're living and breathing, we, we continue to keep hope alive that even if it was a miracle, that we will not go into another civil war to get ourselves to where we, we want to. We, um, we should not be afraid of raising our voices. I know it's easier said than done because I'm in Europe. Some people will say it's easy, it's easy for you to talk because you're in Europe, you know. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is we must not allow them to douse down the flame in our spirits, in our minds. And for the rest of Africa, we must begin to understand that we are Africans. First of all, before anything else, and so the moment we begin to approach every problem in every African country as though it, it's, it is locally us, affecting us and ours, the easier it is for us to bring about the change that we, we seek to see on the continent of Africa. You know, mm. So if you're Ghanaian, don't look at Nigeria's problem as just Nigeria's problem. If you're, if you're Tanzanian, you don't look at Nigeria's problem as, as if it's just Nigeria's problem. If you're anywhere you are on the continent of Africa, you must understand that our fate, our fate is tied together. <laughs> and especially in Nigeria, this Nigeria, whatever works for Nigeria at the end of the day will end up transcending beyond the borders of Nigeria and affect the rest of Africa, be it good or evil. Mm. And so as Africans, we, begin, we should begin to take every every problem that faces every every African country as our problem. So when you see a problem in Mozambique, you know it is your problem. When you see a problem in Kenya, you see a problem anywhere else in the Gambia, anywhere you see a problem in, in the DRC, you know that it is your problem. Mm. Once upon a time, we had a lot of Congolese in, in um, um, we used to call them Congolese in Nigeria. I had a lot of Congolese friends. I didn't know, I didn't really understand how they ended up in Nigeria. But after a while, I began to understand it's because of war. Because of war and, and instability, most of them ended up in Nigeria. They were my good friends. We want to visit each other's countries as though we're visiting family. We don't want to pack our, our little belongings and become refugees in other countries. So the, we should raise our voices. If you're Kenyan, South African, Namibian, uh, um, anywhere you're from, raise your voices. Speak against the ills that affect every, 
every society, every country on the African continent. Because mm. at the end of the day, our fates are tied together, whether you like it or not. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, I don't know what I can say, Dean, but like um, I'm seeing some comments in the chat. Everybody's like, organize, 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 structure. It's all we are doing, all, all our engagement. But of course, they talk, talk, talk. Like me and you, we know doing best. <laughs> um, we, we, we're gonna be doing that. I know that um, you know the 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 big the big guy. It would, yes. would be visiting your house hall. Now tell us about that. <laughs> what are you going to cook on that day? What are you serving us on that day? What is it? Should we come and with our you know hands washed uh, or traditionally? Tell me who is visiting you and how we have to oh, visit. Absolutely. Guess what? You know, for me, this big guy. When I listen to him, I feel like that's all the word of God I need to hear because. It's <laughs> <laughs> Professor Pielo Lumumba will be on Africa Rise with Susan West this Sunday. And so I am super excited. I know you have hosted him time without number, but for me, this is my second time and it's hallowed, hallowed. And so everybody here, please join us on Sunday at 6 p.m. Nigeria time. Join us on Africa Rise TV on YouTube, or you can also watch from my Facebook page, which is SWOB21, SWOB21. We will be hosting Professor Pielo Lumumba, and we're going to be asking him, the man filled with so much wisdom and able to articulate what he thinks, because some of us, we're filled with this thing in our heads, we cannot articulate uh, what we're thinking. But this man is able to articulate what he thinks and so he, he will be helping to give us a direction. So the topic is, what is our faith as Africans? Mm. Should we lose faith? Why is that so important? It is important because I know how affected young Africans would have been. Haven't seen what happened lately with the loss of so many Pan-African residents on the continent. And of mm. course, with what is going on in Nigeria, it looks like some countries on the continent is, is, is making a, a forward movement and Nigeria seems to be dragging us back because if Nigeria fails, it affects Africa so much. And right. so we want, to, we want to hear from him what is our faith, a faith and should we lose faith so that he will tell us from the wealth of his knowledge and wisdom and motivate us and allow us to begin to see how there is still light at the end of the tunnel. Beautiful. Um, I think uh, when I when I saw this, the, the poster this morning, something was just coming up in my head because we're just talking about organizing and structuring ourselves and uh, such things should not even happen. Um, I'm hosting Timmy on Sunday and I didn't even have an idea because it was an exclusive, but now we can organize like, I would do it one hour after because Susan, I don't want to miss your show. I don't want for a second, no one should miss that show. And what we'll be doing, we'll connect it also for our Pan-African Daily TV viewers who maybe cannot lock up or get access, you know, to follow you on Facebook. We will just, not us hosting, you yeah. hosting, but we would share it so that our viewers also, we can reach out to a multitude. And that's how we start by organizing. Then I would do the show with Timmy Frank uh, one hour later, instead of 7 p.m., we're going to do it 8 p.m. And I know you'll be hosting Timmy Frank. When do you plan to do that? Because he said from I, Tuesday. I, I, intend, I intend to do him the upper week. The upper week. Okay. Yes. Correct. Yes. So <laughs> you you have all heard. And yes, you can see Pan-African Daily. We've dropped the, the uh, Africa Rise channel. We are one people. We are one from our names, from our ideology. We're saying it's a united force. Each time, if you don't see me here, you can still see me on Africa Rise, you know, talking also about these things because we have to team up. We have to team up. The same system that is using, you know, to divide this continent, now this generation, we're saying it is gone. It is no more. And we have to rise up. We have to speak loud. Susan, did you ever think about it when Professor Lumumba said, you know, until Nigeria, 
Nigeria would be free and then Africa would be free. Was that the motivation why you invite, invited him? <laughs> um, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't even see that one when I invited him. I just thought that um, I will invite him. What better way to be marking our one year anniversary of broadcasting online? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Bring him. laughs> all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you all heard that all the, world, all the roads are leading to Africa rise on Sunday. Yeah. And we'll be connecting on the Pan African Daily. To give also, you know, give access to our viewers to watch uh, from there or the followers. And why? Because all of us want to celebrate Africa Rise. Now, you want to know what they've been doing? Just go to the YouTube channel. You saw this queen. I mean, I mean, I mean she's me. I'm her. Not only because we're Susan, Susan, but also because, also because we are neighbors. And what is happening? In, in, in his household, in, Niger in her household in Nigeria, it's happening to me. So it's raining on us. And you know what? Us from the Southern Cameroon region, the other brothers from the East of Cameroon, they call us the Biafrans. And sometimes it was very curious because nearly half of the region, particularly the area where I come from, Bamenda, we have all of them are Nigerians, our brothers and sisters. To be honest with you, I never even knew the difference. Not at all. And so sometimes now it's just true that we are one. And, and there's just nothing about he's an Igbo or he was this. If you look at the Abantu culture, particularly Nigeria has a very unique history to know, you know, who were actually the, the Jews. Yeah, and the Nigerians. And so we are comfortably saying that we're building that united force, not only speaking, but we are doing it. So all of us are going to join we're going to shut down Africa rice on Sunday. Now you heard it, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. And that's why you see Susan going out of the show so early enough so that, you know, he can put some structures. Now, please, you share and share and share. Susan, when are we getting the flyer? Do we do we have a video that we need to share, a trailer or just the flyer? When are you dropping it? It's just, it's just a flyer. It's just a flyer, but we're going to put a link to it so that, um, okay. uh, so that um, people know where to, how to where to you know make it easy for people to join so please everyone here go and subscribe to our youtube channel it is yes. africa rise tv africa rise not africa arise africa yes. rise tv subscribe to our channel support us we want to grow i'm inspired by dr tata you know she's been doing this online thing longer than i will ever dream <laughs> no I also started this Pan African just one year. We're not on YouTube yet, eight months ago. Come on, baby girl. <laughs> you are fire. You are fire. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Queen. All right. I know you have to take care of the family. We love you so, so much. And we see us on Sunday, isn't it? Please don't forget uh, to subscribe on her channel. Don't subscribe. Two channels, you have to put it in your mind as Africans, no matter where you're watching. Africa Rise, Pan African Daily TV. Yes. These sisters are unbeatable. Yeah. If you want to get the independence that you need for Africa, give us that numbers that we're needing. Just give us the people and we will deliver non stop. Yes. Trust <laughs> that. Abby. <laughs> Thank okay, you, guys. Please. I love you all. I love you all. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my queen. Bye bye. We see yourself so very soon. Bye. <laughs> bye. Wow, you see, when 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 the vibration, that's how the lioness always roll. When the vibration meet, and I, I can I, I can lie to you that it's gonna be hot. Even on the Pan African Daily TV, we still have a queen that is coming on tomorrow. <laughs> yes, you wanted that, isn't it? You've been asking too much, and we've been giving that too much privilege. Now we want to assist our yeah our 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 men our kings we really just want to part you i love what my husband used to say my husband said ha now is the time we're giving our queens we're giving our women you know the possibility to help us and really we have taken that challenge we're so happy about it to assist yeah we're not saying that we're competing or what the world will want us to do now we're just sitting in for our kings they've killed you a lot They've murdered you a lot. Now we want to take those bullets. Yeah, we want to see how it happens. So we're so happy to have you here. Tomorrow we're going to have a queen from the continent. And like I said, she's going to be telling us about, you know, why is it so necessary that we need to heal? 
We are all broken. We are all sick, though we are so strong and we're still ready to fight. But you know why? We need to heal ourselves. We need to we need to build up the muscles. Guess what? So we should be, be, be you know, keeping a lot of things that are distracting us and, and saving a lot of strength and, and, and our psyche. We have to eat well, eat healthy, yeah? Build up the muscles because the race has begun and uh, there's not going to be anybody that we're leaving behind. Yeah. So, yes, we're going to have that queen tomorrow. Um, I just don't have the flyer from uh, Nisha. Nisha is still going to drop it sometime very soon uh, tonight, but I'll be sharing it with you. Now, you know how it works. We're not going to be sitting here every time telling you like, subscribe, share. It is a common tradition. The tradition you go to Africa Rise, you're not going to disgrace us, Pan African Daily TV followers. You're just going to do the right thing. <laughs> we'll not be reminding us of, because I'll not be hosting. I'll also be enjoying. At least I can sit and relax, right? And when we leave that party and to listen to what uh, Professor PLO Lumumba is going to tell us, that we'll all relocate here and then listen to this young, smart guy. He's not even, I think in, in, in his early 30s, he is Timmy Frank. Timmy Frank, please just go and Google or put it on YouTube. Timmy, T I M I Frank. Yes, that's the one that is going to unlock what has been going on. Of course, we're just listening now to listen, but we know that the queens are going to correct that error. Yeah, we're going to fix it. So, but he's going to tell us a lot what we need to know politically. Yeah, and because we need all this information, we need the information is very necessary. Make sure you're watching, make sure you're listening, make sure you're commenting, make sure you're, you're saving it. Yeah, so we save that strength and that spirit. So, um, I also would be dropping, we might be dropping, Patrick is just signing in to say that chat, chat is not taking it easy. Yes. I mean, sometimes we, we had the AU agenda of the Africa we won 2020 was the silencing of the gun. And I know the big boy has been talking a lot on it from Kenya to, to Mombasa to everywhere he's been going. He's been asking, what about silencing the guns? You know, you know how he wouldn't even sit quiet to ask these things. He's been asking and asking. But now we are seeing a paradigm change in even the nature of the guns this time. The guns just, just end and then we put our hands on our head and we cry. Chad is saying, you know what, over our dead body, you're going to kill all of us before you play that nonsense. So the Chadians are on their street. They are on their feet. They are pampered. That's what I was telling us. We need to get ready. Sometimes we're not ready. We're focused on some other things. Be alert. Just like the pandemic, the COVID just slapped us. Boom. It was already going on in, in China. China had it 2019, November, October already. But most of us were just like, oh, it's always China. Because we're not that kind of a humanity world that we always claim we are. Except when we are pumping out our, net, uh, our muscles to fight Africa and divide them. That's when you begin to see the world unite. But in their own self, they're the greatest enemies to themselves. So even as COVID dropped in 2019 in, 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 in China, we were busy just going and like, oh, it's China's problem. After all, a global world policy would never affect us. What happened? What happened? Even when the, the prophecies, the prophecies of, of the gods that created the world said that by this time, Ha, Susan Tata, Susan West, and all these viewers will not be here. We'll all be colored corpses. Hey, you will see them die on the streets as if they are flies, right? So we need to be alert. We need to be awake. We're not going to be telling us, oh, we have to change our mindset. Change which mindset? The mindset set that we're changing now is the actions that we're taking. It's not the lectures anymore. Right. So the vibration that you're going to be feeling here on the Pan-African Daily TV, the mothers are saying we're not papas. The fathers will say, oh, no, you know, boy, don't do this. You know, mothers, no, they just give you a spank on your face and you, you, you balance up. We don't sit and waste time and begin to talk. Oh, and uh, we, both, we all are sick. We've gone through that trauma. Yes. But you know what? When we slap our heads, they balance our psyche get it right. So it's not just pampering ourselves and cuddling. All this bad habit that we've been learning from here, oh, we have to pump ourselves, we, we need to get healing. 
That healing means we're taking power. When we take power, we're all sane. <laughs> we're all sane people. Nothing is wrong with us. Remember, nothing is wrong with us. So this queen wants to tell us the reason why we need to heal is because we're preparing. We're preparing to inherit. We're preparing to be royals. All right. I, I don't want to put some, some kind of, you know, callous thinking in our head because we've been so groomed to think that when we say we're fighting, you know, everyone is just thinking, oh, what is this insane here? Or even some leaders that are watching me right now, like, oh, so you're preparing to come and take over us. Let's see how you're going to do that. Right. No. You know why we're fighting? We're fighting to unite. We're fighting to love ourselves like never before. It is a war. <laughs> they fought war and separated us and put those boundaries. It was war. They didn't just come and ask us to separate, create those boundaries in our head. No, it was war. So it is war for us to unite, to love ourselves. And that war is not a war that we need to do anything that is, 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 is much is required of us. We don't even need funds. We, that's why we're not going to lobby any government for arms. We don't need it. It's just a war of love me, I love you. Period. Nobody's going to stop me from loving you. There's no weapon that would be put for me not to love you. How? You see why that's the biggest fight that we have to put on. And we, the mothers, the queens, are saying, yes, Papa, you can pamper. But you know what? No, we must. It is a must for an African to unite with the brother and the sister. That we would settle quarrels and whatever when we get home, right? That, that, that we, 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 we are known for that. <laughs> we are known for that, particularly as women. We are known for that, right? But this is not the time. The fight that we're fighting is to love ourselves, to collaborate, to work with one another, to support one another like never before. Start doing it with your neighbors, with your families, with your communities, with your villages. Just ask, what is it that I want to do? We are sparking up that fire of solidarity, of race royalty into your brains. That one, no one would teach us, no history would teach us. No mindset would teach us. It's just doing it. Just stand up and do it. We're not going to be asking, oh, we need to go through 400 years. No. I told King Maponga, 400 years? For what? Even Agenda 2063, for us to unite and become one Africa, we need 30 years? For what? No. We, the people, are going to do it in the commons. And you know we are the majority. And you know why I love us so much? Because we don't have money. And you know, the biggest problem, why we don't always unite is the money. We have time. We have nothing to lose because we don't own anything. We already know that our inheritance is secured on the continent. And so we don't have time to be afraid that somebody's going to take something away from us. We have nothing to lose. So we have time enough. We have resources to unite ourselves, connect ourselves, love ourselves. Now, give us the 1 million tomorrow's, yeah. yeah, the views, the comments, the, the, the clicks, the likes, and the comments, and we see us tomorrow. Now, um, to me, Tata, my technical, we are running off the show. Please come on board. So I want to give out a shout out to Patrick Kassarim, um, who is on the continent, uh, putting up some structures very out there. You see, when we make mouth too much, it's because we have our kings that are backing up. 100%, right? So when we're saying that our, our babies, our kings should wait, it's because they're backing us up. So a shout out to you, Patrick. A shout out to all you, these viewers. Johnny Boy, you're always support. Queen Koboko Sauce, always liking and sharing. Nesha, who is ready to drop us the program for tomorrow. Thank you so very much. And now I have these two prints here, to me and Ia, who is always uh, sometimes, you know, also strong head in their own way, <laughs> you know. So, but it's that we are not raising fools anymore. We are raising even children that can challenge the authority in us. We're raising children that will hold us accountable, yeah. We're not raising that kind of dummies that, eh, mama said, do, do you do it? Or they say, we have to ask why must I do, do it? So, yeah, as you know, 
Queen Nana Tata A4, aka Dr. Susan Tata. I say goodbye to you and we see yourself same time tomorrow. Continue to like, subscribe, and share. But don't forget to criticize us positively. Yeah, positively. We must unite. That's the war. Bye bye. Good night tomorrow. You are watching the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan-African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa.